Hello, seventh graders. This is Mr. Shear, and today we're moving on to a whole new topic, and we're going to look at Washington becoming a state officially in 1889. And this video focuses on Washington becoming a state and specifically on the Washington State Constitution. So just a reminder, Washington became a territory in 1853 with the Organic Act that separated Washington from the Oregon Territory, but it became a territory in 1853. And it took 36 years, 36 years until on November 11th, 1889, Washington officially became a state as part of the United States of America. So if you do a little bit of math, Washington as a state is 131 years old. Now, here's just a little geek out. If Washington's 131 years old and you're 13 this year, which most of you will uh, turn 13 if you haven't already, that means you have actually been alive for 10% of Washington state's history. So Washington is a pretty young place as a state. Now, I'm older, so I've actually been alive for 33% of Washington state's history. I have seen a third of the history of our state. And you look at somebody like my father, who is 75 and has lived in Washington, or your grandparents, and they've actually been alive for 57% of Washington state's history. If you wanna know how long your parents, if they're from Washington, have been part of Washington state history, you just take their age and divide it by 131 and read the first two decimal places. That's how you turn it into a percent. But my point is this, even though you guys are in middle school, you've still seen 10% of our history. Washington has not been around forever. At 1889, it is a fairly new place. Now, why did it take 36 years from territory to state? Well, there's a couple requirements that you might notice on the left of your screen here. In order for Washington to become a state, the population had to be 60,000 people. They had to write a constitution, and a public school system had to be created. Those were the three requirements the federal government had. And the things that held it up, because actually uh, Washington in 1878 um, had tried and applied, but it took 11 years after their first application to become a state, because at first Washington was seen as too liberal to join the United States. And Washington as a territory had wanted allowed to allow and had allowed women to vote. So in order for Washington to become a state, it had to give up allowing women to vote. There was also big debates about whether or not alcohol should be legal or illegal in Washington state. Um, there was a debate about segregated schools. So whites going to one school, African-Americans going to other schools that held up us becoming a state. And then there was a lot of debate about the Native American reservations, whether or not they should just be gotten rid of entirely, or if Native Americans um, should be given their own ter like state within the state. There was a lot of debate of what to do with these issues. So it held it up about 11 years. But Washington officially and finally does become a state, as mentioned on November 11th of 1889, and it actually becomes the 42nd state in the United States. Now, in order to do this, Congress had to pass a law. The law that created the state of Washington was called the Enabling Act. And as a compromise to liberal Washington, some more conservative territories were actually brought in along with Washington, including North Dakota, South Dakota, and Montana. So when Washington became a state, so did three other states. Um, they all went at the same time, and the whole goal of making Washington, which was seen as liberal and open-minded for the time, the whole goal of that was to negate it by putting in some conservative, more traditional-minded states. We're now going to jump into a video that talks a bit about the Washington State Constitution, and this concludes my portion of this video. In the late 1800s, railroad access brought thousands of European-American homesteaders from the eastern United States to the Washington Territory. 
these settlers sought to govern themselves and Washington was set on the path to statehood. A new state constitution was created in 1889 and Washington became the 42nd state. But why did Washington settlers wish to create a government of their own? What were their concerns at the time and how were those issues reflected in the Washington state constitution? We were a predominantly agricultural state. The vast majority of Washingtonians either lived on farms or in small rural towns that were servicing the agricultural sector. People on farms had special concerns. University of Washington law professor Hugh Spitzer is an expert on the Washington State Constitution and its history. Fundamentally, uh, these were people who were very concerned about uh, the public being able to control their own government. They were concerned about government falling into the hands of big businesses and corporations, particularly the railroads, the grain silo operators, and, and the uh, people who ran the steamboats on the Columbia River, big mining companies. Uh, basically, the public was very concerned about the legislature falling under the control of these special interest groups rather than being controlled by the voters themselves. One primary concern Washingtonians had at the time was access to money. In Washington state, people actually had trouble getting their hands on currency. Fundamentally, farmers were boxed in by a lack of money and by being in debt to the seed companies and the grain silo people. When Washington farmers were able to get money, much of it had to go to the railroads in order to transport their crops. Then they had to pay exorbitant rates on the railroads to move their wheat or their hops or whatever else they were growing to move them to market. And this made people very angry about sort of the monopoly control that the railroads had over their ability to get to market. The U.S. Congress passed an Enabling Act in 1889, allowing for creation of Washington State. A group of men were sent to Olympia to draft a new state constitution. The delegates to the state constitutional convention were all men because at that point in time, only men were voting in Washington except for school board. Women got to vote for school board. But uh, the men around the state uh, elected a pool of delegates who came to Olympia which was the territorial capital. And they met for about six weeks in the middle of the summer in 1889, and they wrote a constitution. What was the purpose of the Washington Constitution? There are two basic purposes to a constitution. One is to set up the structure of government. And the other one, which is very clear in our state constitution, is to protect individual rights. While Washington's Declaration of Rights is similar to the U.S. Bill of Rights, there are also many differences. Our rights protections are much stronger. There are stronger religious freedom provisions and stronger bans on any tie between government and religion. Very strong uh, prohibition of public money being used for religion in any way. In addition to protecting individual rights, Washington's Constitution also sets up the three branches of state government. One of the fundamental differences with the U.S. Constitution is the way the executive branch functions in Washington state. Is in the U.S. government, we elect a president and a vice president, and they're really a team, and then they're in charge of appointing heads of departments. In Washington state, executive branch power is split among nine different independently elected officials. People in 1889 wanted to make sure that power was broken up among a number of different officials to ensure that nobody got too much power. The governor is definitely the leader, but the treasurer is independent, the auditor is independent, even the lieutenant governor here is quite independent. Judges in the judicial branch are also elected independently. Washington's legislative branch has a unique clause limiting bills to a single topic. The, the drafters of the Washington State Constitution put a provision in that says that each bill in the legislature has to address only one subject. And that subject has to be reflected in the title of the bill. The drafters of the state constitution wanted an open legislative process for citizens here in the state. If you wanted to know what was in a piece of legislation, 
uh, it helped a lot to have a title at the beginning of the bill that says this bill concerns and it tells you what's in it very briefly but then you knew that if it concerned grain terminals or working conditions in mines you knew that you'd better read that bill senator Patton, please state your point of order thank you mr president i uh would challenge the scope and object of this amendment senator limiting a bill to a single topic prevented interested parties from loading up a bill with multiple unrelated subjects. People were concerned that special interests would go into some legislation that was working its way through the legislature and sneak in things. Limiting the power of big business was also a priority for the drafters. There was a suspicion of the railroads, of the grain, uh, the seed and silo companies, and people wanted to make sure that the, their new state government would control these monopolies. So we actually have provisions in the state constitution banning monopolies. Washington's constitution is different from all other state constitutions in one key area, education. But something that makes Washington's constitution really unique in the country is Article 9, the education provision. Article 9, Section 1 says it is the paramount duty. So that's the number one duty. It's the paramount duty of the state to provide for the education of all children residing within its borders without distinction on account of race, color, caste, or sex. That's the 1889 language. It's very special. No other state has that today. The Washington Constitution is also a dynamic document. It has been changed many times since its creation. State constitutions tend to be more detailed than the federal constitution. Uh, almost all the state constitutions are. They're easier to amend. And so they've got provisions that come online a little bit more readily than changes in the U.S. Constitution. We pretty much have the same U.S. Constitution that we had in 1789. An important change to the Washington Constitution came early in its history with the addition of the initiative and referendum process. Those came in in 1911 and they were as a result of the progressive movement. Again, people concerned about keeping clean government and very importantly government in the hands of the people. So when the legislature passes a bill, if you get enough signatures uh, on a petition, that bill is referred to the people for approval or disapproval. Also, with a petition signed by, I think, 8% of the voters, you can put a bill in front of the voters, a piece of legislation that is altogether new. Though initially drafted to address the concerns of citizens in 1889, the Washington Constitution has adapted over time, evolving to address the concerns of the present. All right, seventh graders, as always, thank you for watching. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.